Good afternoon everyone and welcome. I am Mel Sol, Director of Instruction and Master Professional at the Mel Sol Golf School at Paulie's Plantation Golf and Country Club in Paulie's Island, South Carolina. We also have locations at Sea Trail Resort in Sunset Beach, North Carolina. We have one at Furman University Golf Club in Greenville in Upstate, South Carolina. And we also have one at Ellicottville at the Holiday Valley Resort where I will be teaching this summer. So from about the last week of June into the first week of July, I will be up there. So for those of you that live either across the border into Canada or you're in upstate New York, come and see me. I'd love to have you. Um, I'm only there for two weeks, so book early to be not disappointed. And uh, so give us a call at 800-624-4653. Love to have you. So today I wanted to talk about practice. I had a student come to me who had booked a lesson and when she came I asked the questions that I usually ask most of my students and that is how often do you play and how often do you practice and she said well I, don't, I haven't been practicing very much because I didn't want to practice my bad habits before I came for a golf lesson. So let me tell you something folks, bad practice is better than no practice. You're not going to improve at all with no practice. You can sometimes, when I started golf, I didn't have golf lessons. My parents couldn't afford golf lessons. I went on the range and I hit balls. I figured it out. By the ball flight, I would change my grip or change my stance. I'd fiddle around until I got the ball going the way I wanted it to. I read books and copied pictures and that type of thing. So, you know, I improved and got to play on the PGA Tour after two years, before, having picked up a club for the first time two years earlier. So I, I practice without any lessons. So, but what I notice when I do watch people practice is they just do the same thing over and over and over again. So just remember this, when you, if you're struggling with your game, go and see a golf pro. I mean, that's what we do, that's our living, we became golf pros because we're good players and we some of us became teachers and so a golf pro can help you get on the right path what you think you're doing and what you are doing are always completely different things so when you get your golf lesson I've had students come to me and say well I had a lesson from this pro over here and oh, he, he just didn't help me and I hit the ball worse and I'll say well how much did you practice after the lesson no, well, I, did, I didn't practice much because I wasn't hitting the ball well. Folks, when you have a lesson, remember, don't be afraid to exaggerate what you think you're doing. I had a student recently who was standing at his address position and his shoulders were wide open. His shoulders were way to the left. So I got him to stand and take his elbow and tuck it in and got the shoulders more square. Now, to him, that felt terrible. So I had to keep assuring him. Each setup that he got into, he would get into it like this. And I'd say, okay, take that elbow and exaggerate it, right? Take that elbow and really tuck it right in here. And he would go, oh, that feels terrible. I'd say, okay, go ahead and hit the ball. We hit the ball pretty straight. Miss hit a few shots here and there, but for the most part, pretty straight. If you watch on the PGA Tour, players who are really good players, if you watch Justin Rose, right? Justin Rose, he in his pre-shot routine will kind of do a funny little move that he does like this week. Um, Alex Noren, you know, he has a really crazy move that he does. I'm not even quite sure how to do it. They are exaggerating. That's not really the way they swing the club. The first person I ever saw doing an exaggerated routine was Corey Pavin, the year that he won the US Open at Chinnacock. And he was doing his practice swing and doing this big over the top move like this. And I was like, wow, I, I don't understand what he's doing. 
well, now I do know what he was doing. He was exaggerating because he felt like he was coming too much from the inside and getting stuck. So his practice swing was to throw his hands out here and get his hands away from his body. Now, if you look at his swing when he hit the ball, his hands came down into the perfect position and he won the tournament. So when you're practicing, don't be afraid to exaggerate. If you're working on trying to flatten your swing, feel like you're swinging around here. If you're working on swinging more upright, feel like you're swinging up there. Don't be afraid. What you think you're doing and what you are doing, the best advice is get someone to videotape your swing. After your lesson, I use an app called V1 Golf. You can send me videos on V1 Golf if you want me to do a video analysis for you. But just looking at it yourself, you can see whether you're on the right track or not. So my suggestion to you going forward here is when you're on the range, don't go to the range and think, well, if I hit bad shots, it's not a good practice session. Accept that there's going to be times when you're going to hit bad shots when you're exaggerating. The whole idea is to make changes to your swing so that you can become a better player. Enjoy. <laughs>